Hey everyone, welcome to another video for AP Human Geography. We're going to go through an FRQ on states, regions, territoriality, and other political entities and concepts of political geography. Our focus today is on Taiwan. So we see here that Taiwan is a political entity in East Asia. It's not a defined state, so it's not a country, but it's recognized as a body, a region of China by the United Nations here. So we have a bunch of different prompts here that are related to that topic. So our first one here is explain one measure that Taiwan would have to undergo to be considered a state. Now there are various measures that a place and entity needs to have to be recognized as a state. For one, it needs to be recognized by other countries as a state, but it needs to have spatial extent, permanent population, as well as sovereignty within defined borders. And this sovereignty means that there's no external powers, any external authorities influencing the government and the political actions taken for the country that governs the people and the resources within the country here. And there are two particular aspects of that definition of a state that we're going to be focusing on here. The first one's sovereignty, and then the second one is the recognition aspect. So some sample responses you could have said is Taiwan would need to go through have to have full control full sovereignty over its territory over the defined borders of Taiwan and the government must not have any interference or claims from China Taiwan would need to gain some kind of recognition and I gave you a little bit of a hint here in the prompt that says that the UN doesn't recognize Taiwan as a state so a good answer for this question here is to say that the United Nations would need to actually recognize Taiwan as a state or just the majority of countries or you could say even all other countries need to recognize Taiwan as a state for it to be considered a state because we see in this definition of a state you have to be recognized as one. Taiwan would need to secure membership and international international organizations. And that kind of goes to the recognition aspect as well to demonstrate sovereignty because only countries can join these international organizations like the UN or the WHO. Taiwan would need to receive acknowledgement of its borders and independence from the People's Republic of China. Since we say that Taiwan is a entity of China, we need to have independence that's acknowledged by China to be to have Taiwan as an independent as an independent body. There we go. So part B, we're classifying Taiwan as a type of political entity. And the best answer here is an autonomous region. So an autonomous region is just a region within a country that has a lot of control over itself. And there's just maybe one body of oversight that lets the region make decisions over itself, make political decisions, but they do have the final say. And we see that with Taiwan. We have a, a Taiwanese government that makes a lot of the decisions. However, China is the overseeing eye. They can put in any policy that they would like. They can invoke any action or any uh, bring in the military to Taiwan as they see fit here. And some people may have said a semi-autonomous region, and that would have been the best answer here because Taiwan has a lot more sovereignty than our modern-day semi-autonomous regions, such as American Indian reservations. They have uh, a good bit of control over their local area. However, the the region that they're located in or the, the country that they're located in is going to have a lot more influence, and it's going to be defining what particular policies that they can invoke, what particular powers that they have. They're going to be very, very specific and very, very simplified compared to an autonomous region. Part C, explain one way that Taiwan's sovereignty is limited due to not being considered a state. And just a, a very simple thing that comes to mind is that Taiwan's sovereignty is essentially at the hands of China. They have final say what they say will go. So Taiwan's sovereignty can be challenged by China's claim over its territory that can pressure other countries and organizations to treat Taiwan as a part of China rather than an independent state. So this one essentially goes back to that recognition aspect of being a state, being a country, so that you have to have this recognition from other countries. And since that China has sovereignty over Taiwan, that's going to get other countries or other international organizations like the United Nations or the World Health Organization to treat Taiwan as not a state but a part of China. Taiwan's not a member of the UN. That limits its ability to participate in any type of international decision making as well as invoke treaties because those are between countries as well. Many countries don't recognize Taiwan as a sovereign state and that restricts their ability to enter any international or diplomatic relationship or form any embassies with other countries. They also can't 
enter any binding international agreements such as trade deals or other economic negotiations and that limits their ability to participate at a global level in the economy. Taiwan is also excluded from international organizations like the World Health Organization so that makes it harder to collaborate globally on issues like public health and a lot of people if you said one of these responses you probably also said that that means that they don't have recognition as a state and that's what you're really trying to take away here is that they don't have this recognition over a state, and this is showing that the sovereignty is connected to that. So because they don't have sovereignty, they can't act with these international agreements or these international organizations. Part D, explain one method that Taiwan can take to increase their sovereignty. So they can seek membership in these organizations, and that gives them sovereignty, that gives them this recognition as a state by other countries as they participate in global organizations and global processes and global governance. Taiwan can pursue diplomatic recognition by building relationships with other countries that recognize it as a state. They can strengthen their economic partnerships, sign trade deals with other countries, and that can bring up their uh, global stage influence. They can enhance their military capabilities to get rid of threats that could, that could pose a threat to their economy, not economy, their territory, their sovereignty, because to have sovereignty, you can't have any external pressure over your government, over your political decision making, over the people and resources within a country. Taiwan can conduct political diplomacy campaigns to gain international public support, as well as raise awareness about sovereignty claims. They can also collaborate with other nations like the United States, Japan, or a lot of the developed countries in Europe. Japan's a good one because that's located near Taiwan, and they can form these alliances that support their autonomy, as well as their independence. And that all all of these for the most part they of course they talk about increasing sovereignty but they really do talk about that recognition as a state by other states and that's really what i want you to take away from this frq is that there is so much that goes into this concept of a state if you take a political theory class in college i've taken political theory there's just so much nuance to such basic political terms like sovereignty and like the concept of a state or a nation here there's a lot we can really talk about when discussing these concepts Part E, define the concept of territoriality. So this was actually something that College Board did test about two years ago on the FRQs. So I provided the responses that was on that rubric. I made this FRQ before, but the con this definition part right here was actually something on a previous exam. So they did give a rubric for what College Board deems is territoriality. So these definitions are the best you're going to get when defining territoriality. So we say that territoriality is the connection of people, their culture, and economic systems to where they live live. And if you wanted to, you could say that applies to multiple different scales from the national to the local level. Territoriality is the process by which a set of political units, so just entities like a country with fixed distinct boundaries are created, expanded, annexed, or defended. So this is just talking about defining borders for a place. Territoriality is also the process which a land area is established under a jurisdiction. Someone has recognized control over a government or some kind of administrative control over an area here. So the first one can talk about the economy or the culture. The second one's talking about the boundaries, and the third one is talking about the sovereignty and the self-determination of an area. And each of these would have been fine for a definition of territoriality. And I will say, College Board made these very specific definitions. They, a lot of the times, they don't do that. But this one in particular stands out to me as a very sp particular definition here that they're looking for here. So something very, very vague may not be a good or strong answer to this FRQ. Part F, explain one way that territoriality may influence China's claim on Taiwan. So basically, we're just going to connect one of these, or you could do all of them if you really, really want to, to China's claim on Taiwan. So a sample answer here could have been territoriality drives China to emphasize historical claims, or you could have said cultural claims, arguing that Taiwan has been part of Chinese territory or Chinese cultural for a long period of time since imperial dynasties, and that can strengthen their justification over claiming territoriality over the island. Territoriality influences their claim as China argues Taiwan shares cultural and historical ties. And you can give examples like language, traditions, ancestry. So they say that's a big part of cultural identity here. I could say that it motivates their military actions as they want to defend an area that they claim is part of their own. So they may put in naval patrols or practice air exercises near Taiwan to claim the entity or deter other nations from recognizing Taiwan as independent because they're putting the military on the island and that shows a dependence on China's military for protection and security. Territoriality drives China to assert political claims over Taiwan, and that emphasizes that the island falls under China's jurisdiction. They use diplomatic and 
legal arguments to reinforce their control. They also have territoriality that stems from their strategic location. Taiwan's really, really close to China, and there it's also located in the South China Sea that has a lot of resources, and it's also good for military and economic control of the region. It actually creates a choke point there. China's claim on Taiwan is deeply tied to political ideology and they claim uh, that the Communist Party's narrative unifies the Taiwanese island to the mainland of China, and it deters any type of separatism that Taiwanese people may have, or any other region of China like Tibet as well. So any minority group of people, the Chinese Communist Party or just the political authorities of China may deter them, may just say that they're not necessary, they're weak movements, and may try to suppress them, and that shows terror territoriality over the area because they don't want to have these groups separate from the rest of the country. Part G, explain one potential social effect that can occur in Taiwan due to lacking the status of a state. And we're looking at social effects, so we're talking about people, we're talking about culture in particular, so you can see that these citizens may feel frustrated or marginalized due to uh, the lack of international rec recognition, and that impacts their sense of national identity. So that's a probably a common answer that I think a lot of students would have put. You could say that Taiwan's exclusion from able global organizations like the UN can limit their ability to participate in international discussions and collaborate on global issues and that can affect public morale you could say that restrictions on the use of taiwan's national flag anthem and name in international events so this is kind of more of a, a culture one a nationalism one may lead to a uh, diminished ability to express cultural and national pride you could just say that it leads to decreased nationalism that's okay as well you could say that the lack of statehood could create internal divisions among taiwanese citizens maybe some citizens think that it's okay that they don't have a state or some really really want the taiwan taiwanese island to be its own country so that can lead to a lot of divisions over different people's stances on sovereignty and relationships with other countries there's also limited global recognition that can hinder the development of a cohesive international identity and that affects their placement in the global community and how the Taiwanese perceive this role that they have in the world. So what are some takeaways we should take away from this FRQ? There are seven points on this FRQ because there are seven parts, so each part is worth one point. The concept of an autonomous region, let's give a definition for this. These are when there are extensive self-governing powers in an area. So that includes control over internal affairs. However, it's not its own country. It's a part of a larger political entity, like Taiwan is part of China. Now, a semi-autonomous region region has very much so limited self-governing powers, and the any type of authority is going to be granted and monitored by the central authority, the central government, and any type of autonomy is subject to this significant oversight. And a good example of this are those Native American reservations in the United States. Now, to be a state, you must fulfill certain qualifications. You need to have a permanent population, you need to have defined borders, spatial extent, sovereignty with ex without external authorities, as well as recognition as a state by other states. Without any official recognition, Taiwan cannot participate as a full member in the United Nations. They're not recognized in a global community as a country. They can't join any other international organizations like the World Health Organization, and that limits their ability to engage diplomatically or advocate for itself in global matters. The lack of recognition affects Taiwanese national identity. That can create tension and division between the people of Taiwan. Some may favor independence, or some may favor the closer ties with China, and that impacts nationalism and national pride, as well as as well as their visibility of cultural and heritage across the world. Taiwan is a key player in the U.S.-China rivalry, with the U.S. providing military aid to Taiwan while China increases their military activity. And that kind of connects to that concept of territoriality, where China is pushing that military presence to show that they have control over this territory. And that's also heightened tensions in the regions with all this military presence.